So queer pin embroidery on the sewing machine is one of the easiest techniques for a beginner to free motion to accomplish. All of the ribbon is applied topically with just a stitch or two of monofilament. Clear thread to hold the ribbon into place. There's very little waste of the ribbon. because you're not knotting the work on the back. Even the beads were done on the sewing machine. The little wisteria is uh, a cast on stitch onto the needle. I've got just a plain cotton thread in my bobbin. And I've got a smoke invisible thread in my needle just so that you may be able to see the stitches easier. Now I'm working bare needle, so I want to be sure that I lower the presser bar so that there's enough tension on my thread. You can see that when the presser bar is raised, too much thread will come flooding through your machine, so you want to give your machine a love pat and make sure that that is lowered. To do your first stitch, you'll bring up the bobbin thread. Take a few stitches just to tie the two together. I don't stitch in one spot because it makes a hard knot on the back of the work. And every stitch that you make is going to be covered with stitches with the, the actual ribbon. Okay. Now, I've tied on, and if you'll listen, you can hear that this is taut like a guitar string. And that invisible thread is going through the needle and then it's tied to the fabric. With hand embroidery, um, they normally cut a length of ribbon and then you have waste where you have tied the ribbon to the needle and then you've made knots with um, silk ribbon on the sewing machine, there's no waste. I'm actually going to be able to work with this ribbon uh, still attached to the reel. And I think the whole key to this is, is keeping the, the ribbon in front of the needle and then you're just passing it back and, back and forth, left and right um, for most of these basic stitches. The first one we're going to do is a padded straight stitch. Um, it's used for leaves and flowers, and I'm going to do a little cluster of leaves. So I've tied on. I'm going to take the ribbon and wedge it behind the needle, and just the tension of the thread coming through the needle is what's holding that in place. I'm going to completely take my um, hands off the ribbon, off the hoop. Look mono hands when I take one stitch. That ribbon looks like it's coming up out of the fabric. I'm going to take some stitches just to bury the raw edge of the ribbon. And from the angle that I am, this really looks like it's coming up out of the fabric. It's not showing up so much on camera. Okay. What makes this easy is to always have the needle ready to 
to accept the ribbon. So I'm going to sew ahead to where the tip of the leaf would be and then I'll bring the ribbon to the needle. I'll bend it with slight tension around the needle, not so tight, but you do want to see that bend. And then when I take my stitch, it just goes, it pinches that ribbon down. And again, looks like it's coming up through the fabric. Now I'm gonna stitch back to the base of the leaf and merely swing the ribbon to the other side. And again, jumping over the ribbon, pinches that ribbon together. It looks like it's coming up through the fabric. Stitch out to the next leaf. Then swing the ribbon into place. One stitch. Stitch back to the base. Swing the ribbon again. Now you'll notice that I can turn the hoop so that I can keep the work in front of me all the time. If I kept the hoop stationary, there'd be at times I'd be stitching backwards and trying to pass the ribbon behind. Um, but if I merely sink the needle into the fabric and let that hold the hoop for me, then I can turn where my line of vision is better for making the leaves. And I'm just passing it back and forth to make a stem, taking slight stitches forward, and waving the ribbon back and forth. It's like, it's like being a surgeon, <laughs> you know? <laughs> To do a rosebud, I'm going to stitch out and again I can place the ribbon behind the needle, take a stitch, bury the raw edge, stitch out to the tip of the rosebud, swing the ribbon and stitch. Stitch back to the base of the rosebud. Now I'm going to use these small lift and snip scissors to carefully cut my ribbon. Don't want to fool around and cut my. Don't want to fool around and cut my needle thread. And I'm going to bury those ends. I'm going to come out here for another rosebud. I'll put on all these little heads that are here together. And as you get going with this, you won't always have to place it up just so behind the needle. You can just let the needle catch up. And you can see that that used very little ribbon. Quietness. About four more rosebuds left in that little piece. Now the green, I could cut, or I could go ahead and drag it up here. But keep everything in your line of vision. So learn to turn your hoop to do the work for you. Bending the ribbon on its side each time is what's going to give you that illusion that the ribbon is coming through the fabric and it's really just couched on top. Turning the hoop each time so that your ribbon is between you and the needle will make the work easier. Now to end this, 
um, I could do just a French knot just by passing the ribbon a couple of times. Then I'm going to stitch and out to the side and cut that close again. Again, I would bury the raw edge every time. The uh, silk ribbon pieces are washable, but you want to be sure that you've taken care of all your raw ends because sure enough, in the wash, that's when they're going to come loose.